I can already tell this is going to be a long one, but offensive ebooks tend to be, I like to go into a lot of detail and we're starting out with the lineup. Now, when it comes to lineup, it's very difficult to make hard prescriptions because everyone's lineup is different. Everyone's coin situation is different, but these are the things that in my opinion, you need 100%. I just made a change at quarterback last night. I got Michael Vick instead of Ken Stabler. Let's look at Michael Vick and let's look at what I have. And when it comes to that, I really think that that is just about essential. I have Fearless, Hot Rod Master, Gunslinger, and Set Feet Lead. The Set Feet Lead is not the most important, but I just like it. At this point, in my opinion, it's somewhat mandatory, but Gunslinger, of course, itself is not bad. But if you want the best version of Michael Vick, that is what I'd go for. And whenever you have another quarterback, those are kind of the things you need. Hot Rod Master is necessary, Fearless is necessary and a pass leading ability is necessary. Whether it's Gunslinger, uh, pass leader lead, or set feed lead, that's your choice, but one of those is absolutely mandatory. Second of all, you need two running backs with short in elite. Now that sounds crazy, but you just need it for this offense. And if you are on a budget and you don't know who to use, in my opinion, uh, Cordell Patterson Flash is the best running back in the game. There's no doubt in my mind he gets short in elite for zero AP. Same with work done here. Those two are the perfect combination for me. I like someone who's a little bit better at run blocking than work done, but for me, he's totally suitable. I don't need to go out and spend too many coins. Let's look at some budget options that you can also use if you want to. What I've done here is I've gone over to mutt.gg. I've searched for short in elite running backs with more than 96 speed and uh, like sorted it by price. And in my opinion, the running back that you have to get at least because he's so damn good is Leon Sandcastle. Let's go over to Leon Sandcastle. He's 97. We've got 98 speed. That's going to be boosted up to 99 very, very easily. And let's look at the, his abilities. So he gets short in lead for zero right here. If you want, you can get goal line back and then get short in lead. Is it, in, is it anywhere in here for... 1 AP, oh, that, that's sad. Okay, I guess you can only get short and lead for zero in here. That's what I had for a long time. It was very suitable. I like Leon Sandcastle. He's a great card, especially for the price. That's one I'd recommend you get. And the second one I would, I would recommend you get is either Jamal Charles or um, Leonard Fournette. But because Charles is so much cheaper, let's go in here. 97 speed and he gets short in lead for zero. And there you go. That is what I really, really cannot stress enough. Please uh, use short in elite or your running backs is going to make the entire offense so much more potent. Now on all of my three receivers and my tight end, I have short in elite. This is where I saved a lot of AP because I'm spending a lot of AP on my offensive line. I've made a video about this, like just talking about the offensive line. It, in my opinion, still is worth it. I recommend on the offensive line to have secure protector on both tackles and the center. That's like the minimum. Everything else on top of that is just like making it better. I've got the caster with secure protector and then I've got Russ Grimm also with threat detector and puller elite. Uh, then my guy David DeCastro has nasty streak. Those are just to make the run game a little bit better. And I got to say my run game, it has felt very good. Now, of course, if someone has good run defense, then they're still going to stop me. But run defense uh, has had a lot more trouble with my o-line than it has for basically the entire year now let's go over into practice mode actually by the way i'll just show you this right here i'm using the jets offensive playbook jets offensive playbook because it has split close and we also have a lot of great other running formations and that we'll get into in a second by the way guys this is going to be a long one i put a lot of effort into it so if you're new here please subscribe to the channel Please just do it. But yeah, without a joke, I put a lot of effort into this. I hope you guys learned something from it. There is a lot of info. If you have to watch this a number of times to get all the information, take out a pen and notepaper and write down the route combinations. I'm being serious. That is the best way you can watch this. Also, defense is coming soon. So if you don't want to miss that, also subscribe, turn on notifications. Yeah, enough rambling. Let's get into the high quality content. Now, first things first, you've got to set your audibles. And for that, we're going to go over to the split close. And then we're going to have our two run plays in the formation. We always want to have those at our disposal. So we want to have fullback inside. And then this right here is kind of a wild card. There are a couple of plays that are really good. You could just keep it with halfback wheel, but I usually come out in halfback wheel, so I don't want that. I'm going to call either Z spot. I'm going to put wide receiver corner in this spot. 
And yeah, that is about it. Yeah, either halfback wheel, wide receiver corner, or Z spot. Those are like the three ones that I'm gonna go for. I like to go for wide receiver corner because it is bonkers at beating man coverage, but that's it for the split close. But we gotta set a lot more audibles. We're gonna go over to I form close, stretch, and then power O. And we also want to have PA tight end league. So this is how it looks. FX stretch, 95 mic, power O, PA tight end league. Those are important because we're going to audible from the split close to the I form if we want to, usually against dollar or some very light formation that we want to run the ball on. Now, how do we do this exactly? If we come out in just any play right here, I'll come out on defense. You'll notice that me, I'm trying to audible right now. I can't. I'm clicking the right that is because we have two running backs on the field and we've got three wide receivers on the field. That is a personnel that no other formation in the game is using. So when we come out in this, we cannot audible. Like It's absolutely impossible for us to audible. But if I come out in the package tight end slot, you can see down there, then now you'll see that I have got two wide receivers, two running backs and one tight end. Now with that package, You'll, you'll see that I can audible all the way all the way around. Like, I can audible to so many formations. Let's just go to I from close, run a halfback stretch for one time. You see, it's just say hypothetically, I like this look. I can go in here and I can run the ball and try to get some yards. That is how we can audible down. But there is another great opportunity for us. We can also change our uh, personnel so that we can audible into something that has three wide receivers. So. For that, we're going to go, instead of the tight end slot, we're going to go for tight end at fullback. Now, you see, we've got three wide receivers. I've got 84, Cordell Patterson, who's a running back, and I've got 87, who's Rob Gronkowski, which is a tight end. Now, if I do that, and let's just say, not let's just say, but if you're playing someone who's coming out at big nickel all the time, something that's not really easy to run on, you should go over to iPhone, and uh, not to iPhone, to tight, and we're just going to set our audibles. So, one would be slot post. Seems is not the best. We want to have that be drive corner. PA cross is fine. I don't like PA cross too much, but we're just going to keep it. And so let's just say I'm kind of coming out and split close. And oh, I don't like this. Okay, so then I'm going to audible all the way over to gun tight. And let's come, come into play slot post. I'm just going to make some fake hot routes, but yeah. And then I can hit him in here. He gets destroyed, but you guys see how we can audible depending on our personnel into different things. Now, this is just going to be focused on the split close. I'm not going to do anything other than telling you you can audible because then this video will be way too long. If I showed all the route combinations in tight, we'd be here forever. But that is something that I definitely recommend you guys doing. And depending on what you're facing, you definitely should make those adjustments. Now, on defense... I'm going to just set my audibles real quick just to make sure I can audible into different uh, defenses if need be. First of all, I'm going to show you my main play that I call just about every single time. So I'm going to come out in halfback wheel. That is like my favorite play. And whenever I don't know what to do, I do that. I call this play. You want to call this with the corner route to the short side. Reason for that is if you're running uh, against... Now I don't have an audible. <laughs> if you're running against a cover three or a cover four drop, then it makes the most sense to run the corner route to the short side because there it gets most open. Against cover two, it doesn't make the most sense, but it still is good. Number one rock combo is going to be to put uh, Bolden on a streak, put Reed on a post, and block Flash. Now you see I snap the ball, and if I have enough time, geez, if I have enough time, then the corner route gets open behind it. But in that case, I really shouldn't have waited because what I should do is I should throw it to Gronk with a high pass. Make sure you throw it with a high pass. That makes it better because then the rack animation is a little bit faster and it can get up the field easily. But once again, I'm going to make the read this time. Okay. This time I get a few more yards. Now, what can they do to defend this? And this is where... I'm going to introduce you the first main uh, thing. If they run cover four quarters, you will see that this... I don't have match turned on, actually. I mean, let me turn on match. I completely forgot that. But if they run cover four quarters with match turned on, you'll see that this will kind of give us some issues. So I'm going to run the exact same rock combination. And now you will see that... Yeah. This is... It's, it's pick. It, it really just... It's that simple. It's just a pick. But there's something we can do to defend this. So 
uh, cover four match only works if there are not more than uh, three wide receivers on one side. If there are four wide receivers to one side, then match is turned off and it just plays like a drop coverage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take flash, I'm going to audible him, and not audible, but motion him across the formation. I'm just going to put him on drag. I can even block him if I wanted to. And then I'm going to snap the ball and you see that it plays just like before with the regular drop coverage and we get the corner not open. So number one big, uh, big takeaway is if you're playing someone who is running match, then run this play on him in motion over the running back. So now there are one, two, three and four wide receivers to one side. This time I put him on a drag. You can also, if you want, put him on an angle rod if you want to be a little bit crazy. Uh, but in this case, I just check it down to Gronkowski, get a few yards, and if I have the time and the patience, I can wait for the corner to get open behind him. Now, that is just one setup. There are many, many more that you can do. Another one that comes to mind is this drag from Reed and angle out from Flash and a streak from Bolton. That's like a great setup, in my opinion. Uh, to just really stress the user. This is very similar to the set that I broke down in the Henry video that I did, which is which he's doing out of the tight slots HP week. And it's just, the raw combo is so simple. It's, it's a very simple raw combo. It's easy to read. First thing is R1, second thing is the drag. And then if I get enough time and the, both tracks are covered, chances are hit my opponent shade underneath and that's when I try to throw the corner out. So, that is it for halfback wheel. There are so many more things. I'm gonna get into why I don't like showing that many setups in a second. It is why because it is it is why uh, because I want to tell you guys to freestyle because freestyling is so important this year. And now we're going to get into a freestyling tip that is gonna change everything for you. So if I motion out flash out of the backfield, now you see that he gets slot receiver adjustments. He I can put him on a crosser if I want to. I can put him on a corner. I can put him on a post. You name it. Now let's motion him back. And you see that he still is on the route that I put him on. So this gives you a lot of flexibility. Now, if you motion the running back out to the same side that he's on, he's going to get slot wide receiver adjustments. If I motion him to the other side, now you see that he gets tight end. He gets a crosser. He gets, excuse me, he gets an angle out. So... And then if I motion him, I just reset the play. But then if I motion him back, he's still going to have those exact same routes. Now, depending on what you're facing, you either want the deep corner route or the short corner route. In my experience, if I put Flash on a deep corner route right here, that is perfectly fine. I generally put him on a deep corner route, and this is like a rock combination that I would run off of that. So I'm trying to get outside of the backfield, which just took a while there. Sometimes that's just going to be how it is. Uh, because the game is fluky like that. But we're going to try this again. This is great against man coverage. And this is why I recommend you guys have short in elite. You see how he burns them. That is the nice thing about the corner outs out of the backfield. They do an amazing job against man coverage. But not just the corner outs. Also the post routes. Let's put him on the post this time. Let's put him on the post. Just trying to clear out the right side of the field. And then he gets a step and we can throw it to him. So this is going to open up your offense so, so, so much. Now, when it comes to beating man coverage, what I often recommend is just put, a, uh, put an angle out. With short in elite, you will see that we also get a step. I was, I knew that's almost there. I just wanted to show you in instant replay uh, that that is open. So we're going to go into instant replay and look at this. This is the guy who's responsible for covering him in man coverage. So snap the ball. And... You see how we get a step? If I throw that inside with an aggressive catch then right there, then that's good. I waited a little bit too long, but we're gonna we're gonna fix this. An aggressive catch it, and you see how Flash gets the completion. Against regular man coverage, this works even better. The match does a little bit of a better job of covering it, but use routes out of the backfield as much as you possibly can. Speaking of routes out of the backfield, beating man coverage. One route that is very underutilized, in my opinion, is the wheel route. So we're going to come out and cover one hole. I'm going to call double ins. And I'm going to put triangle on a wheel route. I'm going to block the uh, the other tight end to make sure I don't get hollered at. And then I'm going to snap the ball. You see, we get the time. We get the time. And I'm going to lob pass this over the top. And you see how we get a step. Now, that was overthrown right there by Michael Vick, which appreciate that, Mike. Making me look bad over here. But... We're going to try this again. We're going to try this again. We're going to 
step up in the pocket and boom, deliver that ball. Now please get in there. You see how we got a step, the pass was a little bit too far outside, but the wheel routes, they are very much underutilized in my opinion. Now, this is not something that I recommend you uh, go to on fourth down, in my opinion, because it's just a little bit too fluky for that. Uh, speaking of, because it, first of all, it takes a long time to get open, as you just saw right there. And second of all, because sometimes you're just going to get, uh, you're just going to get an overthrow, as I did like the first two times I tried this. So we're going to try this again. This time I spy the rush to not get uh, any crazy shit. And you see how we get open against main coverage now, you might say. This is Ted Hendricks. Ted Hendricks is, boost, is boosted on my team to 99 speed as well. So, yeah. It's not a speed thing. Wheel throughout, they just beat main coverage. Let's go into instant replay just to show you what happens. Uh, we are a little bit too slow. Yeah, he shuffles right there. And at that point, we're already behind him. Because we're going to accelerate out of the cut. And he's not going to be able to do that. So, that is number one for like the miscellaneous stuff. My main play is halfback wheel. I call it to the short side of the field to make sure it gets open against drop zone coverage. If they run cover four match, then motion the running back from the left to the right or vice versa to make sure we have four wide receivers on one side and then that busts match coverage. Now let's talk about the run game. Power O. Power O is a great run. Honestly, it's it's just a great run. We're going to clean out this hole. And if you don't sprint behind the line of scrimmage, you see how many yards we get. Now, of course, if you have the user who's trying to defend that on the other side of the screen, basically, if you're playing online head to head, then that's going to be a little bit more challenging. But you see how good the blocking is. Number one thing you got to do is not hold R2 behind the line of scrimmage. If you do that, then you see how, first of all, we get sheds. And second of all, the blocking just doesn't set up as well. So we're going to try the same thing again. And this time I'm not holding R2 behind the line of scrimmage. I make my way through the hole methodically and we get the yards. Second run is going to be fullback inside. This fullback inside is great if you need a couple of yards. It's not the, it's not as good of a run as the power row is in my opinion. So I generally don't call it, which is why I probably should look to allocate that spot to uh, something else. But the reason why fullback inside and power row combination is so powerful is because your opponent doesn't know which side the run is going to. Now generally he's going to know because in my opinion, I just spit on my microphone. In my opinion, power row is a lot better of a run, honestly. But Having one run that's coming to, uh, going to the right and one to the left, that's that's very huge. It is a very nice combination and having the flexibility to to go either left or right is is honestly it's it's pretty good. Another thing that you have to know when running the ball is the handedness of your quarterback. I have got Michael Vick, he's a left-handed quarterback, and what that means is that he's gonna be faster on his handoff to the left. So Cordell Patterson, in this case, the guy that's glowing, is gonna get a faster handoff if he's on the left uh, versus when he's on the right. So I'm gonna flip the play now to kind of show you what I mean. So that was a pretty fast handoff, and now you see it's a little bit slower. And the reason why I don't like the slower handoffs is because it gives the offense, uh, the, the defensive line a little bit more of a chance to get a step. Once again, just to show you how much faster this is to the left side of the field. That's it's not that's not a conspiracy theory. That actually is something that is in the game. EA has confirmed it. Uh, it would be very difficult for them to deny it because I guess just there we can just see it. But you see the, the like the mind blowing difference between the speed of the handoff. Now, of course, I broke a tackle there, but. Getting to the second level in time is so important and having the faster handoffs is absolutely crucial. For example, if I now flip the play and like, like flip the formation and then come out in and they call the way full back inside. Now you see how much faster that handoff is and you see how much better the run is all of a sudden. So knowing the handedness of your quarterback and which side running the ball to, definitely very, very crucial. Now that's it for running the ball. We know that's way too boring. Let's go through each play one by one and I'm going to tell you what I think about it. So double ins, I like it because it's got man beating routes. So I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to wheel triangle and block Gronkowski. You'll see that first of all, X is getting open and circle is getting open as well. Anquan Bolden is not the best route runner, but he got a step. That is a good sign generally. That is a very, very good sign. So we're going to snap the ball again. And this time I'm going to wait a little bit longer to throw a circle. You see how we get a step if that's like a zone, uh, uh, like a man kill, that's going to be a little bit more challenging to complete. But we're going to talk about how to complete that in a second. Let's just say on X, I got a man route KO, I aggressive catch it, and then I 
go away from him to make sure I don't get touched when the lighting up is happening. And then after that, I can just do... Uh, I, I can go wherever I want. But X and Circle, they both do an amazing job of beating man coverage. They're one of my favorite plays in like the 20-yard uh, range away from my opponent's end zone because uh, they both get open in kind of a nice tender spot in the defense against man coverage. So if my opponent is running man coverage in the red zone, this is the play that I usually go to. The post, sadly is not the greatest it's not like it's it's pretty good it's one of the better post routes in my opinion uh but it's not the greatest we got a better post for beating man coverage but overall this is a great man coverage beater nothing bad to say about it honestly run this in the red zone if your opponent is running man coverage and you're gonna have a hell of a time now P let, let's rate the plays that's like a seven out of ten play now paf slide that in my opinion is like an eight to nine out of ten it's a it's a very very good play you can just run it stock. So what I mean when I say stock is just run it how it is. It's a play action play. First read should be R1. You see with circle coming across the field and square being there, you get some lead blockers. So once again, we're gonna run the same play twice. Second read, even though triangle is not as good of a read in my experience, that is also there. But the most important read on this is gonna be the circle. You're gonna get this. Make sure you don't get that knocked out by his own KO. Same things apply here. If you throw the ball, you want to aggressive catch it and go away from him to make sure you don't get it knocked out and then you can get your extra yards that way. Now, that is all against the regular coverage with nothing shaded. If your opponent is not shading, then go underneath. Against man coverage, I actually want to show you, this is one of my favorite plays against man coverage uh, because of the flipping that happens and it's actually very, very difficult for your opponent's defense to handle this. So you'll see that we get a step with circle. Circle just gets a step. That's that's very consistent. That's just gonna, that's just a thing that happens, honestly. You see, once again, circle gets a step. Uh, I can run this 100 more times. It's gonna get a step 100 more times. That's how good this is. Second route against man coverage, if your opponent is running this, is gonna be the X. Uh, bad, bad catch by me right there. I just completely walked into the deep out zone. Okay, but you guys get what I mean. So, once again, circle is open, but this time I'm going to make a better catch on Adelman. The post is also open. So against main coverage, we got circle, we got the post. The out route is a little bit iffy. So in this case right here, the cornerback on the left has got so much outside leverage that it really is difficult to get outside of him. If you see that and you're smart, you can put him on a post route. And then now you see the advantage is back to our side and now he can get a step. Because he's got so much outside leverage, I don't think he's going to be able to cover uh, the post drop. But that is just, it's just about reading your leverage at that point. That is also, by the way, why uh, circle gets so open. I say that I press, I'm going to press right here, we still get a step. So circle, great against main coverage, uh, post from X, great against main coverage. If you see the outside leverage from square, uh, on square, then put him on a post shot, and then also you're going to kind of make that work to your opponent's disadvantage. So all three routes are open right here. Circle, we've got the post from X and the post from square. It's a great man coverage uh, beating play. There are a lot more things you can do with it, obviously. Sometimes I do something like this if I'm crazy and I'm thinking, okay, let's hit the, yeah, let's hit the corner out to Bolden. But that's about it. Uh, for the PAF slide. It's a great play because it works very well. It's a, it's the play action for the power rows. So if you're running a lot of power row and then you want to hit your opponent off guard, you call PAF slide and that is why I have it in my audibles. I want to be able to get the quick hitter and then let's say he's over committing to the run and then I can look to hit circle. <laughs> it's, it's a very annoying combination and combining it with the other plays is just going to make it even more menacing. Now, Let's go back to the play call screen and make sure I go all the way from the top to the bottom. Not missing any place, not skipping any place. Z-Spot. I really like Z-Spot because it has a great corner out and it because it allows us a lot of flexibility. So this one you also want to call with the corner out to the short side of the field. I could have just flipped right here, but then I would have had to flip all the time. So I just moved the ball. First setup, streak bolden, drag, and angle out. Same setup as the... Uh, as the half-trick build. Now, you'd be wondering, why do I need two setups uh, that are basically the same? Well, this corner is a little bit shallower. So if your opponent starts setting zone drops to 30 yards to cover the halfback wheel, now this one is a little bit more, is a little bit closer 
15 yards, so that gets underneath it. So that is why you want it. Now, in that case, that was not the best read. I should have. Okay, I see him backing off. I check it down to Gronkowski, throw the high pass, and I get 10 yards easy without the chance of an interception. So that's the read, obviously, right there. But this is just exactly the same as the halfback wheel setup that I showed you. But there is another thing that I want to kind of highlight. We're going to go into here. And this is one of my favorite red zone plays. Going to be honest with you. What you do for this is you're going to put Edelman on slant, read on a hitch, and put Flash Gordon on an angle route. Now this is this is absolutely beautiful. Oops, excuse me. Uh, this is a, an amazing route combination inside the red zone, especially if your opponent starts adjusting against the stock coverage. It's not the greatest as it just kind of looked right here, but I can just check it down to Flash if my if my if the opponent's user is a little bit. Uh, lazy now let's say that he shades underneath it because he doesn't want to give that up again then all i'm gonna do is guess what i'm just gonna throw a high pass in here if i have a taller wide receiver and i can get that in a nice in a nice window and let's not forget also that i've got gronkowski in the flat right here so this is one of my favorite red zone plays i like to go to a lot so just as a heads up that this also is a possibility the thing with corn routes in the red zone, like I'm going to show you this right here. You'll see that the corn route from Edelman runs quite shallower, like a lot shallower than it should. You just saw how it ran right there. We're going to go into a replay just to highlight this point. So we're going to, you see the angle that he takes. It's quite, it's quite a skinny corn route. So now I'm going to move the ball back outside of the red zone. And you'll see how the corner just runs much better. It just runs much more to the sideline. I didn't have a clear out route there. I didn't have anything dragging the zones down. So that's why that happened. But if we go into instant replay, you'll see that uh, this did a way better job getting like the sharp cut that we want. And because of that, I don't like to go to corners in the red zone too much. And that is why I generally I like to call the play that I set up with the slant and the angle rod right there. I like PAF slide in the red zone. And I also like to run the ball. Just plain old running the ball. But yeah, there's not much more for me to say. You can, of course, backside get a little bit creative. You can, uh, can, I, you can if you want, uh, set up a wheel rod combination like that. So, and then, I don't know, that looked kind of bad. <laughs> that looked kind of bad, I'm not going to lie to you. In that case, if the zone drops back, I'm obviously going to hit the flat. But just do whatever. Do whatever. The, the sky's your limit in that department. If you want, you can put a streak out in the field and have kind of it come and like throw it really quickly. It's a chance you have. But backside, you can do a little bit of things. That, that is the last play that was like the last set that was played specific. Now, wide receiver corner. I like wide receiver corner, especially against main coverage. Number one. You will see, as I'm going to spy the rush, you will see that X gets open. It just beats his man off. Right there, he got bumped the man. So we're not going to count that. We're, we're not going to count that. I'm not going to be a douche and say, oh, that worked. That was a fluky. That was a fluky. How do you say that? that was a fluky. Just like a fluky bump. That's going to happen. But I'm going to show you this for real this time. And you see how we just get a step. We just get a step. It's sort of like a, the same deal with the wheel rod. It's the same deal as with the wheel rod, but we just we just get a step. I, I don't know what you want. I, I don't know what you want from me. There's not much more for me to explain. One more time, we're going to go over this. It's right there. We got bumped again. <laughs> um, this is consistent. So if your opponent is not... The sad thing is that this can just be taken away with the deep zone, so it's not that genius. But just know that that's there, and you can hit that if you want to. Now, the second route that beats man coverage is Anquan Bolden on this corner. That's, it's just, that route just kills. It just absolutely burns. So, you just saw right there, that's gonna, that side's going to look majority of the time. The last route that beats man coverage is square. Now, you want to be able to catch those balls, as I just said right there. Pause. Um, that was just a good defensive play by Ramsey, but uh, I'm going to aggressive catch that. I'm going to attack the ball, and you see Andre Reid getting the completion so one more time we're gonna max protect and you can combine that with angle routes very simple very simple angle routes you can do two things first of all you can put 
Gronkowski on an angle out. Or if you want to be a little more creative and throw your opponent off even more, oops, don't max protect. Because if you max protect, if you motion him back into the backfield, then you'll see. Bro, like what's happening? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to run the ball. <laughs> I'll have to run the ball once because I, I feel like that's not gonna go away. Why is he recording again? Jeez Louise, my god. Don't max protect, guys. Because then you can't do this trick. But now you see I have the corner out on the field. And as you guys can probably guess, it's going to burn man coverage. Now, it got bumped, which made it worse. It still got open. It still is a very, very good rock combination. And either that or, uh, excuse me, either that or you're just going to call something like this. And now you'll see, oops, Rob just ran that route so horribly, but it's it's fine. It's fine. Angle routes, beat man coverage. I like the running back work done on that more because he's faster and he's a little shiftier. But yeah, whatever floats your boat. When it comes to beating zone with this, it's not the best because the corner on the right is a little bit shallow. If your opponent is running something like something like excuse me, something like this, where he's got Plameo in the deep zone, you can look to hit that fast in the seam right there. That's like the one cheesy little thing that I can recommend you guys do with that. But in my experience, not the best against zone. Not the best against zone. Let's say that they run cover two and they have Palame once again in that deep third. The post is kind of nice at just getting underneath things. So you can just aggressive catch it like that. And can, it's a little bit of a, a shallower post than the one from halfback wheel, but also a little bit deeper than the the hot rod master post. So for example, that's it with the hot rod master post. And that's like the other post. It's still a little bit skinnier, but in my opinion, not the best play against zone. Great against man, not the best play against zone. Uh, moving on up, moving on up. Uh, the slot curler has got a speed out route on the left that beats man coverage, but I'm not gonna go over it in this video. And extract is very, very good near the goal line as a man beating play. Why is it good for as a man beating play? Well, because, uh, just because, no. My setup for this is going to be to put read on a, uh, like a hitch, slant Bolden, and put flash on an angle route. Then Edelman, you will see that he got bumped forever. If he gets bumped forever, then that's just unfortunate. But, oh, excuse me. Edelman, he should get a step. As you see right there, we get a free release, and he just completely toasts him. <laughs> it's, I mean, if he doesn't get pressed, if he doesn't get bumped, then this route just absolute toasts. It's not even <laughs> It's not even fair. I just went back over it in my head uh, how good this is. But, like, right here, oops, I dropped back too far. But right there, the end grab was open. So you'll see right off the snap, if he gets bumped, uh, like, if he gets pressed as he is getting right here, just check it down to, to Flash Gordon. Aggressive catch that. Once again, do the thing where you come back to the ball to make sure you don't get it knocked out. Uh, but let's try to get one more rep where he doesn't get bumped. And he gets bumped again. But he can sometimes fight through it. Not this time, though. If he doesn't get bumped, it's great route. But it seems like he gets bumped a lot more than I had in my, I had in my memory. Yeah, that's it for the split close. Now, I can't uh, reiterate this enough. Audible, 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 audible. So for example, if your opponent comes out in a, in a defense, if he comes out in main coverage, then this honestly is like the number one rock combo that you should be going towards. Like just snap the ball and you see how we just absolutely toast on the outside. It's not even fair in my opinion, but just audible make sure you have your personnel set if your opponent runs dollar against you then just run the ball run the ball on him call power row excuse me uh tiny slot perfect if your opponent comes out in dollar db fire too okay i see this and the first thing i do is just run this i run the ball and then you're gonna get him out of that very very fast so that's like my number one thing that you always have to keep in mind try to run the ball against dollar try to run the ball against these weak sets and then if they pinch their line for example that's when the blitz is a lot worse so at that point you can get away calling wide receiver corner just blocking a running back and running a play like this at that point you can get away with that very very easily so and you can see how i get time and then i can make my passes so you want to get them to at least pinch their d line and if you really want to be stubborn about it like just run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. And that was lucky right there. He got, he touched me like the first time, which kind of slowed me down. If he doesn't touch me right there, then 
it's it's over. It's it's just over. I get to the second level because I have uh, heavy personnel. They get weak box, so their guys are running slower, and it's just a mess. So against Dalla, run the ball against everything else. Try to pass the ball with the status that I just provided you. Please, for everything that's uh, holy, freestyle. Freestyling is so important. Get into the habit of just doing whatever with your plays. Try to figure out what works against, especially against main You're gonna have to mix it up. I gave you the tools. Now it's just about you executing. There are a couple of routes in this that I said beat man crush, for example. PF slide has a couple of routes. Double ins has got great routes. Uh, wide receiver corner is the best man beating play. And then angle routes out of the backfield. Make sure to use the uh, trick where you motion and then you get corner routes out of the backfield. Do that as much as possible. And you're going to have a lot of success. The defensive ebook is going to come very soon. I'm also going to make uh, the extended version of this not extended version but i'm going to extend it to the tight and the iphone close that's going to be one of the next upcoming videos just be patient on that i still want to i'm not using that as much because i stay in split close a lot i still want to find some glitchy things in there to really make sure it's worth your watch but i appreciate the support you guys have been showing me the old line video has really exploded so i can't thank you guys enough for watching that it's like the fastest it's gone to a thousand views than like any of my videos within the last past one and a half uh, years. So I appreciate you guys for that. Make sure to subscribe to not miss the defense. And yeah, I'm out. Peace.